Navi Pillay, we could draw a line from Pakistan through Afghanistan, Yemen, Iraq, we could go through to Syria, we could go all the way through to Libya and then down to Nigeria through Mali. I mean, what do you feel about the state of human rights as you leave office? The, and the countries you mentioned, yeah, I total, I would say there are about 12 or 13 countries right now where there's a surge of conflict and the UN being called to uh, provide humanitarian aid and intervene in so many countries at one time. Um, I think about the other 180 countries who respect the international obligations they've signed up to. Uh, so we have to look how come there's no conflict in, in, in the whole world and how are they addressing it. Nevertheless, uh, when you went to the Security Council just a few days ago, I mean, you told them in no uncertain terms that their failure to act has cost, in your own words, hundreds of thousands of lives. And I stand by that. I, I, I met with the... P5, for instance, over breakfast, and I said to them, there is just one reason why they are there, and that is to find, to make the decision to ensure that there's no threat to international peace and security. So they have to make that decision. We have ISIS in Iraq, terrifying grouping, carnage, the murder of 670 prisoners in one prison alone, You've got Syria, where the death toll is over 190,000. What should the Permanent Five be doing right now about Iraq and Syria? I think they should seize the moment, because things can't be worse than it is now. So many lives lost. We now have produced verified details of the figure of more than 191,000, which is double what it was last year. They should seize the moment and use all their powers to address the situation in all of those areas. After all, this is why the United Nations was created. Many people expected you to have a second four-year term, but in the event, it was two years shorter than a four-year term. Um, would you like to have gone on? No, I, I was ready to leave after the first term of four years that that was the mandate. The, the mandate had never been extended to any previous High Commissioner. Uh, the Secretary General asked if I would s serve another two years, which Some, I readily accepted, and I'm happy with that situation. Some people said it was the United States who, who stood in the way of a full second term. Yes, well, I've heard that too, but not directly. You're very highly regarded for what you've done in, in positioning human rights at the heart of what is the life of the United Nations. But at the same time, people don't like it, and you've been subjected to the most extraordinary abuse. What, what are some of the best epithets that have been thrown about you? I've been called a lunatic. I've been called a monster. <laughs> um, well, then there are those thousands and thousands of emails that support our work and thank us for raising issues of concern to them. And that's what counts. Now, through social media, we're hearing from millions of people. This was unheard of before. I have seen in my time that complete change of the response from civil society. How do you feel um, that your work in Sri Lanka has really made any difference? I mean, uh, I mean, by chance, you are yourself of Tamil descent, um, though from South Africa. Um, did you find that an advantage or a disadvantage in trying to persuade the Sri Lankans um, to recognise that something terrible had happened at the end of the Civil War? I was surprised when I was uh, appointed High Commissioner that I was identified as a Tamil. It never mm. occurred to me that that's a factor. I am South African. And in our struggle in South Africa, you're either black or white. Uh, so this ethnic or language component surprised me. If it had been the other way around, uh, if it had been a, a, a Tamil-dominated uh, government uh, uh, exercising these uh, violent acts against 
a Sinhalese population, I would have acted exactly as I have done. I, I have been very supportive of the people of uh, occupied Palestine, for instance. Yes, so I don't think Tamil is a factor there. It's been made an issue by uh, the government and certain uh, sectors in Sri Lanka as a distraction, I believe. Navi Pillay, thank you very much.